Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to Positive News Now. I'm your host, Gail Nowak. Today, our guest is the ever-inspiring, award-winning author, international speaker, corporate trainer, and author coach, Sandra Elaine Scott. She's the author of six multi-genre books for children and adults, including her books, The Magical Day, which won a first place International Latino Book Award for Most Inspirational Youth Chapter Book, and Manana Starts Today, which is an International Book Awards finalist. Sandra specializes in helping authors, educators, and students turn their someday dreams into today's reality, and she does so through her unique blend of powerful, captivating stories, positive strategies, and practical action steps. She has spoken at numerous school assemblies as well as library and author events and has been seen in the Boston Herald, Wicked Local Millis, and on dozens of ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox affiliates nationwide. Welcome, Sandra. Oh, well, thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Gail. <laughs> uh, I'm so excited for this. <laughs> so why don't you just start off by telling us about um, the types of authors that you work with and how you help them. And I know that you um, have such wonderful experience being an author, an independent author yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so I know you're going to get into uh, sharing some of your, your wisdom with us. Ah, about what that means, but talk to us <laughs> just a little bit about your audience. Sure. So one of the things you asked about is what is my audience and, you know, 80, uh, eight, what is it? They say 82% of the American population want to write a book and that, you know, that there's that less than 40, 14% actually realize that dream. And my goal and mission is to really help authors or writers become published authors mm. and to do that with joy and with love and so that it's not a chore because often the times when we learned to write, it was for an academic setting. It was in school and it becomes a drudgery. And if you're writing something that, uh, that you're passionate about, that you want to inspire others about, whether it's your life story or you want to inspire children, you should find joy in doing that. So I help writers do that and really help them create a path of their own success. As you said, I am an indie author, and so going the independent route um, means you get have a little bit more control but of your vision, but you also need to be strategic and, and working the plan. And so I help authors work their plan to become a published author. I love that. I love that you have that that joy piece, right? Because it, how how do you really stay motivated if you're not if you're not feeling it, right? Because it it does. There's this practical aspect to the craft, right? You have to be yes. diligent. You have to have a schedule. You have milestones to meet, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's that creative side, right? And so it. I feel like the joy piece is. Um, not something that I hear a lot, a lot of uh, author coaches necessarily <laughs> talking about, right? But without that, how do you stay in that practical space? So I love that you're helping your, you know, your clients and and authors really sort of tap into that place of joy, so that they can become published author. So thank so, you. Yeah. You know, tell, me, tell us a little bit more about that. Like how, sure. well, you know, and I'll use, you know, I always tell anyone I'm mentoring and coaching, I, I always tell them I pick on me before I pick on you. <laughs> so I use my own misery to end. That's how I shape it so that I could help you be better. And I'll never forget when I was writing Manana Starts Today, it was that winter where I swear it snowed every Friday, every Monday, and I loved to walk and get out and there was nowhere to walk and all the, the you know, the snow banks were as high as the stop signs. And I'm trying to write this book about finding joy and creating affirmations of 
love and transition and motivation. And I had zero motivation to give to myself. And I remember, but I was so, con so committed to the writing that I've got to write this and I have to write this, that I was writing. And later I would, was looking at the pieces I wrote and I thought, oh my gosh, it's God awful. And I say that with, with, with in, in, and really I did the writing, but it was like, you need to have this. And there was no joy in the writing. Mm. And I finally took a moment and stepped back. And so, and a friend said to me, Hey, you, you don't sound like you. I'm like, this weather is making me miserable. She said, you're the most positive person I know everybody's miserable. So if you're miserable, she's like, read a book, do something. So I vegged out and I did absolutely nothing and then got back to a place of calm. And that was able for me was where I was able then to be inspired again in writing. And again, most of us, when we learned to write, it was for school and in academic settings and we were structured in our writing. And when I mentor authors and writers, I tell them, think very differently about your writing process. This is not an academic um, setting where you need to have a strict outline. You need to have, you need to have a beginning. You need to have an end right where you are. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> You're mm -hmm. resonating, right? Yes. Right. Whatever comes up, you know, you get that stray fleeting moment as you're walking down the street and you jot it down right from that spot, nowhere else, just right there. Don't worry where it fits into the outline, just start writing. And then when you're done, you can then pull it all together. And that is how I think of writing with joy. For me, I talk about writing. Um, is for me a form of art and art is creative expression and most art is born out of chaos the chaos of the artist's mind well the writing is the chaos of your mind with words so that's it <laughs> I I feel like this is a great metaphor not just for writing but for everything in life right absolutely right absolutely. because it, it, if you have joy in nothing that you're doing, whether it's your business or your career or parenting or relationships, you know, it, it, if you're just going through the motions, it's almost like wasting energy, right? Like it's kind of, yeah, you're keeping up appearances, right? But then who are you doing it for? But and who are you what, doing it for? Exactly. Right. And, and what satisfaction do you have? If you have a business, why are you in business? Especially if you're an entrepreneur, a solopreneur, you had a vision. You had a dream of whatever your product or what you do is that you wanted to share that with the world. If you go after it with, I'm just going to get a client and I just want to get it. Like you're just, a, you're a, a, at war and you're attacking, then where's the joy in that? Where is the peace of mind for you saying somebody wants my product and I'm proud of that. And where is that peace of mind to the client that feels that then they're not being aggressively sought after they're you're, you're going to get me now. What? Right. So right. it's the joy is all of that. Yes, absolutely. In, in, in your business as well. Yeah. I also love that you, um, I think for, for some people, you know, whether it's, writing or whatever your field of, of expertise or your passion is, I think you, after a while, you kind of get to this place organically of, hey, you know, I can kind of just do this my own way, even though it might have been taught to us specifically. So I, I love this idea that you, once you kind of get your hands on, a, <laughs> on an author, that you, you're granting them that permission, not that they need it, but, but it's also sort of like saying, Hey, it's, it's okay that you don't follow the process that you've been taught and you sort of accelerate that, you know, it's probably like 
unleashing a dam of, of oh my God. <laughs> creation. It is. If you give some permission. You know, I recently taught a class on critical thinking and did a workshop around it. And the whole process of why um, children are so creative is because they, they are not yet you know, we, we smother them with the rules as we, as they get older. So by the time we become adults, we are in this box of rules and that we have to do things a certain way. We have to, you know, society says you have to do it a certain way. You know, one of the reasons Mal Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Outliers, people who choose to do things differently. So my thought is as a business owner, as a, a writer, you know, as a creative do it your own way. You know, one of the, the mantras or the affirmations in Manana Starts Today, Manana Starts Today is dare to be the person you want to be. Not what everybody else is telling you to be, but who you are. Mm. Because, you know, you know, right now the big phrase is you do you. It's the truth. <laughs> when you try to do other people, you become a robot and you sound like everybody else and you're not your true authentic self and you don't bring that to your work to your livelihood to your family and then you become a watered down version of who you should truly should be mm -hmm. yeah so what are some of the outcomes that your clients achieve after working with you working with me and my goal when they work with me is that they are able to realize their dream of creating a, a work that they're proud of, to, that can be published, that they can learn to speak about their art and who they are with more confidence, more joy. You know, I say a lot to a lot of people, especially... Um, solopreneurs, everybody wants to write a book. Your book is that, as they say, an oversized business card, but it speaks to who you are. So now you have a walking, talking business card that you are able to give someone. It's I'm able to help motivate you and transition you from a writer to an author, to a speaker, to a creative to a more fully realized, actualized self of who you want to be in your dream. That's a pretty big transformation, Sandra. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's, that's amazing because, you know, it, it is really one thing to be like, oh yeah, I'm a writer, I'm a writer, but you can be, you could be a writer, a secret writer for your entire life. Yes. And nobody knows anything about it. It's a much different thing to be an author and be a published author. Exactly. And so I think I, I love that you're bringing up the distinction between the two because it's a really important, it's a, it can be kind of a subtle and overlooked distinction, but it's a really important distinction of being able to step up and not just put words on a paper, but share those words in a very public way and talk about it. And I, I love that you mentioned, you know, helping your your clients speak about their book, talk about themselves as an author, because that's a really important piece that I see in a missing piece that I often see with all of these um, opportunities for entrepreneurs to, to write a book. I, you don't see it. You don't see so much about the promotion of it. Right. No. I don't and, and the, get the sense that they're being coached on, okay, this is how you go out and, and promote your book. It's more like, this is how we can, you know, help you publish your book. Exactly. Because uh, one of the things is, you know, a writer, you know, I often say this, I am a writer at 3 a.m. <laughs> so when I get that inspired idea and I roll out of the sleep and I grab my computer and my laptop and I, you know, write something down or I jot a note and then go back to sleep, I'm a writer. But when I get up in the morning and I start my day, I'm an author. The author is about the business of your book. 
which is, you know, and so really helping and mentoring authors to realize the business side that when you go out, you need to speak about your book and speak about what you do in a way that's relatable so that people will buy your book and why that book will be helpful to them. And most of us, and I'll say all business, you know, especially as solopreneurs and entrepreneurs, we get caught up and I, I, I want to tell people we vomit all over them and we go all the things that we can do for people, but we don't, we, what we don't do is we don't tell them why the book is important for them how how it will work for them what what it will do for them and so giving you know giving an author the the tools to be able to share their story and then make it repeatable so that people want to buy it you know most of us myself included want to be the next jk rowling but until we are there and people are coming in droves and lines around corners to us, we have to be approachable um, to, to our audience. Yeah. So talk a little bit more about some of the myths that authors may have about the business of being an author. Uh, my, my favorite one is that, so the book is written, so everybody's just going to buy it. right (laughs) piggybacking on on our comment about you got to go out and promote your book right so well i wrote the book you know i i I never met uh i was on my friend's facebook page and i screenshot it and i sent it to my sister and i said this is what i want you to do this friend um her brother wrote on her page my sister wrote a book I don't know if it's good or not, but you need to go buy the book because my sister write a book. This is my sister. She wrote the book. Here's the link. Buy my sister's book. (laughs) (laughs) And I said, it was genius, right? And the biggest myth that we have is that once the book is written, that all of a sudden we are going to rake in millions Mm -hmm. and, and be able to... Um, that all of a sudden people are just going to buy it. You have to be strategic. You have to create a marketing plan. You have to learn how to speak about your book. You know, so it's it's creating that. A lot of people who go with small traditional publishers are also often disappointed because they got a small advance and then nothing happens because they're the the publishers on to the next big thing. Again, you have to speak about your book. You, so the marketing and the promotion is really heavy on an author. And a lot of authors are used to being in their, or especially writers, are so used to being in their own heads, they don't know how to do that. The other big myth that I believe, especially coming from an indie route, is that if you, that, oh, self-publishing is bad. Self-publishing is not a bad avenue. It is not, it's no longer what it used to be. Yes, it used to be very much vanity publishing. And so you, you know, somebody, you did, wrote a book and you had 10,000 copies, somebody that you got paid to print and it was stuck in your garage. You know, chicken soup for the soul. Um, um, oh my goodness. The biggest one of all 50 shades of gray, all of those started out on very small markets, indie markets, and indie is another word for self-publishing, but the difference between indie author or independent author and self-published author is independent, you really are looking at a higher quality. And so the biggest myth is as a self-published, you're gonna do everything yourself. No man, woman is an island, and you cannot do it all alone. So you must, if you, if you want to do it and, and compete on a major scale, you must have great editors, um, graphic layout, you, you know, cover design, strategic partners to help make it work. So those are, I think, some of the biggest, two biggest things that I think 
that I would say happen in that, um, that I can think of off the bat. Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense that you would think, oh, I'm self-publishing, so I have to do everything. But you don't. You absolutely don't. And it's probably a lot more fun <laughs> to have <laughs> to have uh, you know, look, everybody's got their got their budgets and and what have you, but if you have the resources, why not connect and collaborate with people who can make it more joyful, right? Absolutely. And and sometimes it's not even monetary resources. One of and one of my best examples, and as I said, I tell all my clients, I pick on me first, is when I wrote my children's book, um, The Magical Day, I my niece who was 12 at the time, I used her as one of the people to sort of read the manuscript and let me know if there were any holes. And my sister called and said, oh, my gosh, she's losing her mind. <laughs> and she wants to know, can she, she wants to tell you stuff, but she doesn't know. Can she tell you the truth? I said, tell her to, ha- you know, send it back and be as honest as she wants to be. And she said to me, she sent it back and she said, Aunt Sandra, stop with the big words. They're kids. <laughs> <laughs> Which is brilliant that you asked a family member of the demographic. <laughs> of the demographic, exactly. Because, right. again, you know, I thought in my infinite wisdom that it would be just delightful that a children's book that didn't need it anywhere. And I would just throw in this vocabulary word, disembarkment, because he, he's traveling, he's getting off the plane. So rather than say that, the, the, you know, Donovan got off the plane, I said he disembarked, on, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and right away. So sometimes, you know, one of the things that, again, if I think of the other myth is, well, how much money is it going to cost me? And I want this to make money. And, you know, if we're, you're coming at it at the back end, what is it this, what is it you want the book to do for you what are your long term goals and how will this help you to reach it well i wanted to reach a wider audience i wanted to reach children i wanted to reach children of color that was my long term goal not the exact money but i knew if i kept a word like disembarkment in there hmm. i'm going to turn off people So you find the resources, some paid, some unpaid, but people to make it better. I often tell people to find people that like you to read your book, but people who don't know you as well, so that you don't get just people like, oh, sweetie, good job, because you do need some harsh reality in there as well. Yeah, and and again, it just speaks to that whole that whole piece about being creative and strategic about things. Yes. And so I would love for you to talk about how strategy and creativity helped you get into a major bookseller and, <laughs> and how, you know, what, what would be your advice uh, to other authors? So Sandra, Sandra is in Barnes and Noble and uh, she, she, she has a very creative way <laughs> um, and has some really good relationships um, with a top Barnes and Noble retailer here in the area. And so I would love for you to talk a little bit more about that experience. Sure. So uh, <laughs> strategy is interesting. Um, my former career was a nonprofit director. So I raised m- lots of money for a living. And so one of the things I know is people never wanted to talk to me. Right. So I got used to learning the art of follow up and I learned to not take it personally because you call people all the time and, you know, not people don't want to hear from me. Well, the same goes when I think about trying to promote and market my book. When you're looking at trying to get into a big box store and a retailer, I went in and I was like, so, you know, I, I met, I met the, the buyer at a, at another event and found out he, he was from Barnes and Noble. I'm like, so when are you going to have me? Huh? Huh? And he's like, slow your roll. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm, you know, he's like, you know, we need to proof, you know, we'll, we'll proof it out. And we'll look. I'm like, don't worry. I have done the screening for you. You want me. 
So it, a little bit. <laughs> yes, I know. I know. I. Lo- <laughs> this is what makes you irresistible. <laughs> screening you don't need to screen it here here's my card when when do you want me to follow up and i think he was uh, probably a little bit taken back that who is this pushy broad (laughs) Uh, and by the way i did it all with a smile because one of the strategies that i tell people if you follow what i do one of the things that i that i do well is i'm pushy one of the things that i do really well is i'm not aggressive Mm. Mm -hmm. right so i make you when you leave me you should still leave that that interaction with me with a smile on your face and where i see the strategy where the hole that people have is they become very pushy so nobody wants to take your call and you're like oh god it's her again or versus oh my god it's her again what nonsense is she coming up with okay i'm probably gonna say no but let me hear it right well it's it's, and it's the difference between coming from a place of fear and coming from a place of joy right yes exactly it goes right back to what i said in the beginning right <laughs> so, and so the strategy was i knew i would love to I, it was one of my goals to get into a store like that so we you know we, he, we ended up calling me in we met and i was just like okay great i would love to be in your store so they tried me at this, you know, they tried me in the store and with just a, with a, a modest amount. And especially one of the big things that happens is when you go into a bookstore, they will get take, they buy your books and hopefully you sell them. That's your goal is to sell their, you know, they will have you back if you sell. Mm-hmm. They won't have you back if your books stay there. So I did my own promotion, say, hey friends, I'm gonna be there, you know, come visit me, tell your friends, I'm gonna be there. So even though they promoted me, I also promoted myself. And then when I got there, and the big thing I tell people is that, again, we are not, you know, I'm not yet JK Rowling, so sitting behind the desk and uh, the little table with my books, waiting for people to just come up to me is not necessarily going to sing. So sometimes I would stand, I would smile at people as they pass by. How you doing? You know, while I'm there, be more engaging. So when you are more engaging, the strategy of going, when you get to the store, if you get a meeting, and they have agreed to say yes. They've got. They're taking your books. Promote your, They will promote you. You promote. You promote them. You say this bookstore is having me. You say where the bookstore is. You you say what time you're going to be there, and you do it constantly. Social media can be your friend at this point. Tweet it out. Yeah, you know, I often tell people, don't go to these events alone. Mo- I always, and I tell, say it this way, I drag a friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need somebody to take pictures for you. <laughs> exactly. I don't have a professional photographer, so I drag a friend or two, you know, at least one, to come and just be that person all day. And so they're around. So now it also looks like there's always somebody around you. So that's a strategy that you're building who you are. You know, act as if you are J.K. Rowling Mm -hmm. or, you know, but you're not there yet. So to have the attitude without the attitude, if that makes any sense. It does. It's funny. I I, I saw something just uh, last week about... um, it's from another author. So that's interesting. She was talking about how before she was a published author, how she kind of was was in a rut about the fact that she wasn't published. And so she was kind of focusing on what she didn't have rather than, you know, 
uh, which, which she did have. And she started playing this game of living the life of, of a published author. Yes. And so she started, she started just everything in her life. She started doing around this concept of I'm living the life of a published author. Who would I have lunch with? How would I dress? What events would I go to? Um, what would I be writing about? What would people, you know, what would, what would be the result of my book? And, and lo and behold, <laughs> today she is a published author and she's actually um, connected. I'm not sure if she's published with Hay House, mm. uh, but she has connections with Great. Hay House. Okay. So there's, there's some power in this idea of it's not fake it till you make it. It's I'm operating from not necessarily from who I am today. I'm operating from who I'm becoming. Absolutely. One of my, um, I'm also, as I'm also a voracious reader and one of my favorite books is Jack Canfield's The Success Principles. Mm. And I was fortunate to um, take his breakthrough to success several years ago. And that's actually what helped me write my very first book. But one of the main principles he has in there that I love is act as if. Act as if your dream has already come true, which is exactly what your author has done. And so, you know, speak like you're an author. Talk like, you know, act, act the way you want to go. When you're out and you, you promote yourself in such a way, not obnoxiously, but it's like, yes, I'm, yes, you know, what do you do? I'm an author. You know, I go places all the time. People ask me, what do you do? I say, oh, I'm an author. And they go, really? I, I, I just have to tell you. Um, I had, you know, at that age now, I had to have a colonoscopy and I'm in and, you know, then she's asking me, as they're prepping me, what do I do? And I said, I'm, you know, I'm an author and, you know, they start to give me anesthesia and she's on the computer and she said, oh my God, here are all your books. (laughs) (laughs) It was awesome. (laughs) Right. Right, and you never know where those conversations are going to to lead. It's the same thing Absolutely. when you, you know, as a business owner, people um, ask you, you know, what do you? That's the thing. Like everybody asks you, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? And at the when I started my business at the beginning of the business, you know, I was very selective about who I would share that with. You know, if I were if I were in a group of like minded people who were kind of working on the same thing, it was very easy to talk about it. But, you know, go to the grocery store or go to this kid's school or go to, you know, the doctor's office. And I was kind of shy about it. And then it finally got to the point where I was just like, well, it doesn't matter. Like, they're not, they may or may not become a client. What what does it matter if I say I'm a business owner? <laughs> like, what what's the hang up here? And And it's funny when you kind of let go of that some incredible things happen. Like I, I was, my mom was in the hospital and I was talking to one of the nurses and she was like, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I'm working on this program and I'm working um, with these organizations and what would be your advice to, to market this program and get more participants? It, like you just never know. And she never became a, a client, but the work that she was doing was so important. She was working with, um, uh, the elderly and, and with a specialty in dementia and, and Alzheimer's and, you know, really, really important work. And I was more than happy to share with her some ideas without any sort of expectation of she's going to become a client. This is a woman, take care of my mom. The least I can do is, you know, be the business owner <laughs> that I am and give right. her some strategies. So you just never know right. and you, how you, things are going to come about. Absolutely. And I wasn't, of course, you know, I'm here half la- in La La Land, not thinking I'm, I'm going to sell a book. Right. I'm just like, yeah, this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I come out of it and she has told the other nurses and they're all talking about me and I'm just chuckling to myself. And I thought, you know what? 
that's the way it should be. That's mm-hmm. the way it's about. And that's how, again, you talk about the strategies that, that I give other authors is always be at the ready. And it was something from my fundraising days when I was always selling something, right? I we had a ticket to an event, a raffle, you know, I needed you, you know, for, there was always some way you could donate money to whatever organization I was working with. So I always had stuff ready. And that's the way I feel that you should be either as an author or even as a business person. You're not getting somebody, but you're always at the ready to be available to give them something or leave them something so that you are remember that you will be remembered by. Mm, yeah, I love that. I love that. So what inspired you to want to help authors up their game? Uh, you know, a couple things. Um, for me, going through some of this stuff was a lot of trial and error. And through, I was, again, I came through and as I was learning some of these tools and techniques on my own and then discussing it with other friends who were also successful, I realized, wow, it would really be nice if I could help people. And I had been trained um, as I'm a certified coach to coach people on living the life of their dreams. But more and more people are saying to me, really, I want to, one of the things that I want to do is to also write. Or they wrote, their book was already out and they had gone the indie route, but it laid flat Mm. and nothing had happened with the book. And, or, and they wanted to know, how is it that you also went indie and I see you all over the place or you're doing everything? And I wanted to be able to share that because I have fun. I have so much fun sharing my friends on and, you know, clients become friends because you see them doing these extraordinary things and you're like, oh my gosh, how cool is that? There is so much abundance in the world when we're all sharing our passion and sharing our joy. And so I wanted to be able to gift myself in that way to others to help them succeed. And folks, Sandra really does have a lot of fun. I mean, and and it's, it's, it's magnetic. I mean, it just, Sandra and I have a, have a friendship beyond, you know, this interview and we have a lot of fun together. We talk to each other on a regular basis. She's, she's been to my home and has hung out with my kids who are, um, you know, my kids are part of the audience that, that some of her children's books are written for and they love her. And one of the most significant things that happened, I think for them this summer was that Sandra came and, and we recreated a scene from the magical day that, that had inspired uh, one of my daughters. And, you know, it, it's being open to those opportunities. It's not just about, I got to sell my book. I got to sell my book. I got to sell my book. No, it's, it's how does, well, at least for you, Sandra, this is what I see. It's really, how do I create these connections through my message and through my book? Absolutely. And I got to tell you, um, your daughter is my, my little fan club. And I had, I, I remember, you know, to your audience, I had said to Gail, oh my God, I want to surprise them and, and kind of hang out with them this summer. And I have this wicked, awesome idea. I want to recreate the scene for my book. And I tell you, I never had so much joy. I was in tears. I'm, again, I'm so glad I brought a friend with me to capture the moment. Right. And, so, and the, you know, that we were able to recreate something from the book, but to see the joy in your children's faces. And when I look back at the pictures and saw the joy in mine and how much they blessed me to make me understand why I do this work. And so when we, when you see your work being valued and appreciated for future audiences, there's nothing that's more magical in the world. And, and it truly was, you know, I often talk about magical moments. That was 
a true magical moment for me. Mm. It was magical for us too. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. So what other positive shifts have you experienced as a result of your work? Oh my goodness. You know, I'm, I'm going to go back to just that last statement on magical moments. Mm-hmm. One of the, uh, you, you know, and I said earlier that pe- yeah, I tell people to model my behavior, but don't be your, be your authentic self. Learn, it, one of the, the biggest shifts I've had is learning to create my own magical moments. I have so many people say, oh, Sandra, that only happens to you. Or, huh? How did that happen to you? Or really? How can you do that? Look for every new opportunity and find the magic in it. And and deciding, creating a shift in myself that says, you know what? I don't know what today will hold. I don't know what this new business venture will bring. But I'm going to just trust and jump and leap and grow wings on the way up. I often hear the phrase is grow rings on the way down. Who says I'm going down? I'm <laughs> flying. <laughs> I'm flying. And if I go down, that means I'm bouncing. So I'm going to bounce and I'm going to bounce back up. So creating the shift would be to learn to recognize a magical moment, even when you don't recognize that. So that means being open. And just being open to whatever is there, whatever is new and available. So you're speaking to someone and it's about your business. You have no idea. You were in a hospital setting. That particular nurse, it may not have been a client for you, but it opened up a vision for you for new ideas for new clients down the road. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. And then you're speaking with her. She remembers you to tell somebody else. There is a ripple effect that happens when we keep our eyes open to magical moments and, and really recognizing that in ourselves. Before we wrap up, is there anything that our listeners should know that we haven't yet covered? The sun is shining wherever part of the world you are. Because the sun rises every morning, sets every evening, and there's always a new day. So it's always a day to just get started on whatever goal you have, who you want to be. If you don't like where you are now, change it. Act as if, be, create, do, love, laugh, and have fun and have joy. I love it. How can someone, (laughs) how can we find out more about you? Sandra and your books and your programs. Absolutely. Sandra Elaine Scott.com. Until next time, remember, be your best story and share your positive news now. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.